Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, and we're going to talk about Netflix Cowboy Bebop. Yeah, I know, right? It's been months since it's been canceled, but we're going to talk about it because the creator of Cowboy Bebop, the anime version of Cowboy Bebop, uh, Shinichiro Watanabe, Shinichiro Watanabe couldn't watch Netflix's live action Cowboy Bebop. It was tough to continue. It was awful. It was so bad that the person who was behind the original series couldn't stomach watching more than one scene. That's not exactly uh, high praise, right? And I'm hoping, hoping that One Piece is going better, but somehow I don't think it is. I don't think it is. So this is kind of in a stark contrast to people who worked on the original series of praising, praising Netflix's version of it. Um, you know, it was just a disaster from start to finish. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Netflix saying that they don't cancel shows that were successful. So clearly Cowboy Bebop was not successful, got a lot of views, but it was obvious it was not going to make its money back and it was brand damaging and uh, everybody hated this show. Almost everybody hated this show. Now, the weird thing is, is uh, Watanabe's reaction, his his negative reaction was the one scene in Cowboy Bebop I thought was actually pretty okay, and that was the opening casino scene. And uh, I was like, yeah, this might not be too bad. It's kind of uh, Tarantino-esque. It might not be terrible until Faye shows up. And I'm like, yeah, hell with it. Hell with it. I'm not watching anymore. So let's, let's talk about this. Uh, let's talk about it. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over 290, almost 291,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support. Greatly appreciated. Uh, please subscribe uh, for sure. Make sure that you're still subscribed if you subscribed a couple of years ago, because I, I, apparently if you don't interact with the channel enough, uh, if you're just quietly watching, YouTube will unsubscribe you. And uh, yeah, they're up to shenanigans this month. I think they do it every couple of months, but uh, make sure you're still subscribed. So it's coming from IndieWire, and they got it from Forbes. Uh, Forbes had an interview with uh, Shinichiro Watanabe, Shinichiro Watanabe, on the making of Cowboy Bebop and what he thinks of the live action adaptation. And it's not good. He said, clearly it was not Cowboy Bebop. And I realized at that point, if I wasn't involved, it would not be Cowboy Bebop. So right after 3, 2, 1, Shinichiro Watanabe couldn't go anymore. The Cowboy Bebop anime creator revealed that the Netflix live-action adaptation of the noir series was tough to watch. Starring John Cho, the short-lived series was canceled by the streamer three weeks, three weeks after its premiere. In November of 2021, for the new Netflix live-action adaptation, they sent me a video to review and check. He told Forbes, it started with the scene in a casino, which made it very tough for me to continue. I stopped there. And so I only saw that opening scene. It was clearly not Cowboy Bebop. And I realized at that point that if I wasn't involved, it would not be Cowboy Bebop. He added, I felt maybe I should not have done this. Uh, although the value of the original anime is somehow far higher now. Build as not a remake, the series garnered poor reviews. That is putting it mildly. Weirdly, the audience scores up on it, though. Now, I do think some of the casting wasn't completely terrible. I actually thought John Cho was pretty good. Um, I thought uh, Mustafa Shakir was actually pretty good. Faye, uh, Daniela Panita, who was attacking attacking fans who were mad that she wasn't wearing her uh, anime-accurate skimpy outfit, making fun of those fans. Yeah, she wasn't very good. She was terrible. <laughs> she was not just because of that. She just was not good. Uh, once you have a successful title, you receive a lot of requests to make something similar, and in this case, something like Cowboy Bebop. Uh, Watanabe said of his career, I have received these kinds of requests for more than 20 years. I understand the reasoning behind these requests, but if I went down that road, and I would end up doing the same thing over and over again. Ultimately, people would then get tired and lose interest in my work. I also feel I have more variety to offer within myself. With that in mind, I have avoided trying to do similar things. Uh, Cowboy Bebop star Cho addressed the shared fandom of the 1990s anime series that debuted stateside in 2001 and the live action remake. I was very warmed by the response to the show. I wish I could have contacted everybody and gotten hugs. Uh, I mystified a little bit about how you can connect with people that you don't know doing your work, uh, but I won't question it. I will value it and treasure it. I'm really deeply appreciative. So yeah, there was a petition to keep it on the air. I don't know why it was, a, it was trash. It was just, it was trash. Now, what's interesting is Netflix is whacking the beehive. Uh, they're coming out and saying that 
they only cancel shows that are clearly failing. They don't cancel any shows that are popular. So any any show that's been canceled by Netflix apparently uh, was not successful. This is coming from The Independent. Netflix subscribers are in hysterics over CEOs claim that they have never canceled a successful show. Well, Cowboy Bebop canceled after three episodes. Right, or three weeks. That's right, because they just dropped the whole thing. Um, yeah, it was terrible. And it was, it was actually, I think, the number one show on Netflix for a week or two, and that just dropped off a cliff because they looked at it and they're like, the show's expensive. It's poorly reviewed. It's not going to go anywhere. And thank God, thank God we didn't get a season two because the kid that played Ed, I couldn't have watched a whole season of that. There's no way in hell I could have watched a whole season of, of that version of Ed. Uh, not Netflix gaslighting the entire world claiming they never canceled a successful show, <laughs> wrote one person. Um, look, they believe the numbers, right? So earlier in the week, uh, CEOs uh, Ted Sarandos and Greg Peters gave an interview with Bloomberg. The interviewer asked the duo, how was the evolution of your business affected? Uh, how did it affect your relationship with the creative community? Adding that people online are constantly outage, outraged. I think it's supposed to be constantly outaged about, about shows being canceled. Uh, Sarandos answered, we have never canceled a successful show. A lot of these shows were well-intended, but talked to a very small audience on a very big budget. I think that includes a lot of animation. I think that includes Cowboy Bebop. You know, uh, the key to it is you have to be able to talk to a small audience on a small budget and a large audience on a large budget. If you do that well, you can do that forever. Sarandos did not make it clear how Netflix measures the success of TV shows, but his comments have sparked some strongly worded responses from online fans of canceled Netflix shows, including the Babysitter's Club, the uh, OA Glow. I actually like Glow. I thought Glow was okay. I am not okay with this atypical Santa Clarita diet and the Dark Crystal Age of Resistance, which I freaking loved. But I think that's exactly the kind of show he's talking about. It was very expensive and it was very niche. The original Dark Crystal movie was very niche. It did not perform well at the box office. Um, but by God, I loved Age of Resistance. I thought it was good. It was one of the few sequel prequels that I think was actually better than the original because the original Dark Crystal movie was very kind of bare bones, but uh, this one uh, I thought was really good. And I was very, very disappointed by its cancellation. In November of last year, fans were dismayed to hear that the mind-bending mystery series 1899 was canceled after one season. The adult animation series Inside Job was axed earlier this month. Animation is a very easy thing to cut because it's very expensive and it doesn't get a lot of return on investment unless you're selling merchandise. And we've, we've talked about this before. Uh, Netflix, you must be joking. Never canceled a successful show. I don't know a single person who could say you haven't canceled something they really enjoy. That's different. That's different. You don't understand. There's a difference between you personally enjoying the show and the show making a return on its investment. You know, one person compared the Rotten Tomatoes ratings of The Recruit and Warrior Nun, of which the latter scored significantly higher and yet was canceled after two seasons while The Recruit has been renewed. One ad, a clip of Will Byers' character in Stranger Things where he's possessed by the mind flare and has to be restrained. Someone else accompanied the quote with a gif of Will Ferrell and Elf saying, you sit on a throne of lies. Uh, no, I think it's true. I think it's very true. And, and just because you enjoy something, and this is, again, very true of animation, very true of, you know, adaptations of, of nerd, like niche nerd culture stuff. It doesn't mean that it has mass, mass, mass appeal. It doesn't mean that it's popular enough to continue. I think if, you know, in the case of the Masters of the Universe stuff, if Mattel wasn't bankrolling it or helping to bankroll it, I think it all would have gotten canceled because I don't think it brought enough views, uh, you know, compared to what those shows cost. They, they were, you know, Revelation, as much as I hated it, was still a very expensive looking show that still had, you know, A-list voice talent. And I'm sure it was a very expensive thing to produce. And I don't think Mattel got the return on the investment they're hoping for in toy sales. Um, and Netflix probably didn't get the watch time they're hoping for. I don't think the, the Revelation series was even a blip on the top 10. And definitely the CGI series was not a blip in the top 10. And in my personal opinion, the CGI Masters of the Universe series was, was vastly superior to Revelation. I didn't even expect 
to like it. And I, I freaking loved it. I'm like, yeah, it's very different from the original He-Man, but I knew that going into it. And the show itself was just a very high quality show, but I, I don't think we're getting any more. I think it's over. Um, and Cowboy Bebop is long since over. And even the creator of Cowboy Bebop is throwing shade at it. It's, it's done, man. This is like, now the difference with One Piece is, I guess, Oda is on board, you know, hopefully, maybe, possibly, or they just threw buckets of money at him. I don't know. I mean, he doesn't need the money. The dude's like mega rich, but uh, there we go, guys. I'm going to wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later.